Hello and welcome to another Add Puzzle tutorial. Last time, we've looked at how to create an account and manage our account settings. In this second part, we're looking at the Add Puzzle user interface and navigation. When you log in onto your Add Puzzle account, first thing you will see is your home screen. Your home screen is made up of several things. First is your content, home, curriculum, your school, and your content. Another thing you will see are popular channels, Ad Puzzle, YouTube, and other things. Right in the center of your home screen, you will see collection of video clips sourced from either your school or things that are trending. In the top right corner, you will see content, gradebook, my classes, and your account. If you click on your account, you will see a drop down menu. There will be a standalone tutorial for gradebook and classes. So we will not talk about them today. Every time you see an Ad Puzzle video, it will include a couple of things. First, you will see a thumbnail of the video. The second thing you will see is the duration of the video clip. Right below, you will see the name of the clip and right underneath, you will see a name or the author or the person who created this clip. You will also notice this little sign and a number, which will tell you how many questions this video has already. This clip, for example, has a, a thumbnail. This video is five minutes, 47 seconds long. It has four questions or notes embedded. If you look on your left and click on curriculum, Edpuzzle will offer you curated content for your classes where you can choose between elementary school, middle school and high school. Why don't we click on view content for middle school? Let's say I teach science. I'm looking for a video for life science. Let's click on evolution and beginner level. Once we let Edpuzzle know what we're looking for, we are now looking at the selection of videos that fit our requirements. If I click on any of these clips, I'll be prompted to the Edpuzzle viewer. And this is what it looks like. A viewer normally has a video in the middle if it has questions or comments, they will be displayed right here. At second 42, there's an open-ended question and there are two more open-ended questions at this time marks. Now, if I play this video clip and skip a little bit forward, now when we reach the first open-ended question, video stops and I'm prompted with the first open-ended question, which I need to answer. And this is how you can preview the content and see if the content meets the requirements of your lesson and if this is actually what you're looking for. To move back to the home screen, simply click on Add Puzzle in the left top corner. We are back to the home screen. Right under the curriculum, you'll see the name of your school. If I click on my school, Add Puzzle will show me all the videos or all the Add Puzzles that have been created by teachers in my school. First of all, it will show me video clips that are related to my subject area. When I registered, I chose computer science as my subject area. That's why all the video clips that fall under the same category will be displayed first. If I scroll down, I can select another subject area. These, for example, are videos for science. And again, you will see a thumbnail, duration, number of questions, name of the clip, and person who created this clip. If you click on any of these clips, you will see similar interface video viewer in the middle. You will see questions on the right. You will also see a time frame and where the questions will appear in this video clip. There are a couple of things you can do once you found a clip that you like and that you think will be suitable for your class. First thing you can do is copy. After I click copy, Edpuzzle tells me that Edpuzzle copied to your content. So now this video clip is in my content, which we will check a little bit later. When you click on edit, Edpuzzle will take me to the editor. This is where you add questions or comments to the actual video. We're not going to look at the editor today. This is going to be a topic for our next tutorial. Let's click on Edpuzzle in the left top corner and go to our content. So now in my content, I have two clips. The first one that was created when we clicked copy and then another one that was generated when we started editing. So as a teacher, you need to know that if you find something in the Edpuzzle platform and you start editing, 
Adpuzzle will automatically create a copy of this video and put it in your content. Once you are in your content, there are a couple of things you can do. First thing you can do is click on this clip, which will bring you to the viewer that we saw before. But you can also select this clip and do the following. You can assign this to your students, which we will talk about in the next tutorial. You can edit again a topic for another tutorial. You can move it to folder, duplicate or make a copy, unselect or delete. Let's try and move it to folder. When I click move it to folder, Adpuzzle will ask me which folder do I want to move it to. I don't have any folders, so I will create a new folder for my grade 6. When I click create folder, I will select this folder. Now when this folder is selected, I will click move. Now I have my grade 6 folder, I have my video. If I click on grade 6, this will contain this video clip. To go back to my content, I'll click my content. If you want to delete the clip from your content, click on this box, select and delete this clip. And remember, because we copied the original clip, we're not going to delete the video from another person. We're just deleting this video from our content. If you click on add content, you will have four options. First one is to create a video. This will enable you to create an add puzzle video completely from scratch. We're not going into the creating videos today, we're just looking at the interface and what's available. Another thing you can do is upload video. Now, unlike create video, upload feature lets you upload files from your computer, not file, not videos found on the internet, but just files located from your computer. You might want to do that if you, for example, recorded your screen for your students and you want to embed some questions in there. So this is where you will go to upload files that are located on your computer and not on the internet. Third option under add content is student project. In student project, you let students create their own videos with questions and submit it to you. So instead of watching your video clip and answering your questions, you're basically assigning students to find a video and you give them instructions to embed questions and audio notes. So it's a cool way to engage students into the creative process, not simply watching ad puzzles, but actually creating the content themselves. Now, finally, we have new folder, my new folder and description. This folder will appear under your content. You can use this feature to keep your content organized. So we've looked at our home curriculum, our school and content right underneath. You have popular channels like Adpuzzle, YouTube, Khan Academy. If you click on any of these channels, this will take you to a selection of video clips and a search engine, which you can use to find video clips for your lesson. Remember that if you go to any of those content, none of them will have any questions. These are just video clips from Khan Academy. Uh, these will be clips from TED Talks. As you notice, none of them have any questions embedded. However, if you go to Adpuzzle, some of the clips in Adpuzzle will have questions embedded because these are Adpuzzle video clips and Adpuzzle videos have questions. Another feature that you need to be aware of is search content right at the top. When you search content from here, you will search the entire library of Adpuzzle. Let me demonstrate an example. I'm looking for videos or videos with questions on water cycle. You will notice that now Adpuzzle will show me all possible video clips on water cycle. Some of them will have questions in them. Some of them are just YouTube video clips that I can use to create my own videos. Now let's move ahead and talk a little bit about what happens when you click on your account in the top right corner. From here, you can do a couple of things. First of all, you can edit your profile. If you click on your name, you can customize your first name, your last name, your account and your password. If you click on settings, there are a couple of things here that you need to make sure you switch on. Prevent skipping will prevent students from skipping video and questions. It is absolutely necessary, I think, to have this feature on on. I mentioned why it's important to have your school and subject area correct in the first part of the Adpuzzle tutorial. If you for some reason miss that, I'll leave the link in the description. Plan will tell you what's your account status on Adpuzzle. Right now, my plan is basic. 
and if I go back I have storage of 20 video clips on the basic account and I've used one of them or I have one video already invite teachers will prompt you with an invitation screen which you can use to invite teachers to add puzzle and you will have an additional storage if this teacher is sign up through your invitation if you click on the resources this will open a library of things that can help you explore add puzzle in more depth certifications will take you to yet another page where if you select that I'm a teacher and I want to find PD you will be guided to a vast library of professional development resources uh, not only on Adpuzzle but on educational technology in general most of this if not all professional development opportunities are free and offered by Adpuzzle you get a digital certification and a badge once you've completed those tutorials what's new will take you to the list of most current updates with Adpuzzle today we've looked at Adpuzzle home screen and navigation you've learned how to navigate through curriculum your school different kind of contents and settings if you have any questions about materials we covered today, leave them in the description and I'll try to get back to you within 24 hours. In our next tutorial, we will look at how to actually create your ad puzzle video, how to embed questions, notes, or a voiceover. I appreciate you taking your time to go through this tutorial. I hope it was helpful and I'll see you next time.